Some people call this a hobby, but for me it's also about training and preparedness. There are a lot of different ways one could do this, from a car, a truck, a camper, a cabin, or some other type of heated shelter, but I don't choose to do it that way. The Finns have this thing called Sisu, and after a couple of decades of living here on and off, I've started to understand what it is. You see, doing things the hard way isn't necessarily a bad thing always. Since inevitably, the experience will make us stronger and hopefully a little bit wiser. This video is about the radar challenge from April 2017. It's not my normal video format, but I hope you will enjoy it nevertheless. All right, let's get started. Emergency broadcast systems this station broadcasts emergency news and official information on the air for a sign area. The Radar Challenge is an event which promotes rapidly deployable amateur radio stations. There's three different types of radar stations. We have fixed stations, we have radar field stations, and of course we have roving stations. There's also several different kinds of roving stations. Motorized or mechanized vehicles, bicycles, uh, man portable or paddle canoes, wheelchairs, and of course airplanes. This time I'm going to be operating on foot, although it could have been uh, snowshoes or forest skis. This radar challenge, our emphasis was on radar to radar contacts. Of course, that doesn't exclude stations of opportunity. Another hope or goal was to carry out a skid between Zulu Sierra 6, Bravo, November Echo, and myself using JT-65. I also expected the random PSK-31 or PSK-63 contact. That generally works well for me, and it worked well in the trial run from the backyard. Now I know my comms objectives. Let's look at the kit we need to achieve those goals. As it's been in the past, my rig of choice has been the FT817 for phone and digital modes. I'll use the Zulu Lima Papa Mini Pro SE interface for interfacing between the tablet and the rig. The Samsung Galaxy Tab Active running Droid PSK and JT65 Android. Just in case band conditions wouldn't cooperate with my scheduled JT65 QSO, I have a 45 watt amplifier in the kit. Finally, I'd need enough battery power to keep it all running for four hours. That's the entire time of the challenge. This time around, I decided to use the Super Antenna MP1 DX Max. I wanted to ensure that I used an antenna which could handle the high power and high duty cycle of the digital modes. I also wanted something that had two meters integrated into the system. And I needed something that didn't require a tuner because my Z817 tuner wasn't compatible with my amplifier. I knew the weather was going to be challenging, so I decided to take a route that I was familiar with. It's a part of my daily dog walk and uh, left me about one and a half kilometers hike to the first operating location. Temperature stayed uh, plus minus zero and uh, transitioned between freezing rain and snow. Actually, colder weather, like minus 5, minus 10, even minus 15, would have been preferable over this zero and freezing rain. But other than getting the top layer of my clothing a little wet with the freezing rain, the hike to the first operating location was uneventful. So I hope suffering through this first part of the video gives you an accurate idea of the conditions I'm operating in. As I arrived at my first operating location, I wondered if any of the other radar challenge operators around the world had similar conditions as we find here. Still, it's not a competition. 
but the reality is I'm going to have to consider how to operate the next time around. It may be time to accept operating from a TP tent as a field station. The few times I've set up the Super Antenna MP1DX Max you've seen in my previous videos. So I didn't have a lot of experience with this antenna. I also decided to pack the MP1DX Max into a smaller, easier to access uh, round pack. This pack is less organized, but I don't need to fiddle around inside with my gloves off to get out the components of the antenna. You see, the original case that comes with the MP1DX Max is absolutely well organized, but things fit so perfectly in there that I need to remove my gloves in order to find them and take them out of the case itself. And any additional fiddling while I'm out in the cold means that much less time that I have to stay out without a shelter. I'm also grateful that I have enough time to get outdoors and test my gear. I mean, without doing that, we would have no way of knowing what works and what doesn't. The super antenna configuration was a telescopic whip, the super slider, two extension rods, the UM2 universal mount, the counterpoise kit, and a tripod. As you'll see in a moment, I failed with the tripod because I forgot to bring the weight bag that I usually load snow or rocks or something in to weigh it down. So it ends up falling over during the setup, but uh, there was no damage. Just a field note here about the telescopic whip on the MP1. It's got an incredibly small breakdown size, which is why I carry it. Uh, the cost of that breakdown size is it being delicate. Here you can see I use the frequency guide to pre-tune the MP1 DX Max. In retrospect and having more experience with the system, I would rather use the FG1 frequency guide for uh, getting close to the band that I want and then using an SWR meter with an SWR bridge or AB antenna switch uh, to fine tune the SWR. Once again, it's all about reducing the unnecessary fiddling in the cold. Some of you may be noticing my frustration interacting with the counterpoise. At this point of the setup, my fingertips are already getting cold and my goggles were icing or fogging up. That frustration is short-lived as uh, almost immediately when I turned on the radio, I had my first QSO with Italy. Here comes fail number one and fail number two. Fail number one. So I wonder how many of you caught this. I didn't notice at the time, but my counterpoise wire was not completely extended. This would definitely be the cause of the SWR problems I had at my initial tune-up. I noticed that fail and corrected it before I started operating, but it's a reminder to do things by the numbers because you might not be able to see when you're deploying your antenna. Now we're approaching fail number two. The last step would be extending the tripod up to a recommended height of around 2 meters. This was my first fail of the day. Now using the telescopic whip, I'm lucky it didn't break when it fell over. I did have a uh, spare with me, but still, this was a stupid mistake that I shouldn't have made. The fail here really wasn't with the tripod, it was with not having a low center of gravity. I forgot to bring the pouch that usually attaches to the tripod. I fill it with snow or rocks or other things I find on location to keep a low center of gravity on the tripod. In the end, I decided it was better to work with the MP1 at a reduced height using this tripod instead of trying to uh, maximize its elevation. Mm -hmm. 
One last check of the SWR and knock the snow and ice off of the antenna, and I can get started with setting up the rig. Since I'm using a hiking trailer or a ski pool normally, I don't mind to take along a folding chair or a folding table to increase my operating comfort. But I did realize during this radar challenge that I need to come up with a smaller or a more compact folding chair and table. I think one of the reasons that I'm not using a shelter is the time it takes to set it up. If I want to be a roving station, I still have this four hour time limit to deal with, uh, and it's kind of a deal breaker. I believe this artificial four hour time limit will force me to set up as a fixed field station with a hot teepee tent for the next winter radar challenge. So it's a trade off between more effective operating or more mobility. Let's see how it goes next time. And here we can see the station set up, ready to operate. I didn't realize the GoPro was frozen and the lens ice covered, but uh, I hope you don't mind. Oscar, Oscar, hotel, hotel, number eight, number eight, Sierra, Sierra, Tango, Tango, November, stroke papa. Outstanding, you are 5 by 9 plus plus. Where are you located? Uh, please, uh, are you where located? Uh, Kilo Papa 25, Quebec Charlie. Kilo Papa 25, Quebec Charlie. Oulu, Finland. Oulu, Finland. QSL? QSL. Uh, Ocean Mary. Sierra, uh, Ocean Mary 8. Sierra Tango Norway. Julian, thank you for the contact. Have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So as we can see, the station actually worked well, but of course that's not the end of the story. Let's take a moment to go through them point by point. As a portable digital station, I have absolutely zero complaints. The only fail I had was not having a spare cable once I broke the only one I had. The ski pulk was magnificent. It allowed me to carry a lot more weight and comforts that I wouldn't uh, normally have the opportunity to carry. The fail was not installing the cover to protect my gear along the way. The concept for the GoKit came from the IMCOM community and it worked extremely well. I'd like to improve it by integrating all of the components, the radio, the uh, audio interface and so on. Uh, into an ammo can type package already connected and squared away. Push a button and ready to go. Now we arrive at the radar roving station. Setting up a roving station is actually magnificent. I love doing it, but there are challenges operating man portable in cold weather that fair weather operators never experience. Now, at least for me, I have to say the radar challenge is not about how tough I am. If anything at all, it's about how well we adapt to the environment we're operating in. And that brings me to the next and last topic. Over the years, you've seen me operating man portable from a variety of different locations. In fact, most of the compliments that I get about the channel are the getting there aspects of my MAM portable uh, excursions. Well, if the goal is actually to accomplish more effective communications, not to see how well I can suffer the cold, then I'm going to have to change the way I operate. Don't worry, the getting there aspect of my excursions and expeditions will not change. What will change is what I do once I've arrived at my location. So the obvious conclusion is to start operating as a fixed field station. Operating MAM Portable is always going to be a part of this channel, but the idea of maximizing capability with minimal gear is even more important to me. And in the end, that's what this channel is all about. 
So as we close this video, I'm going to leave you with a couple of interesting things. Firstly, from Victor Alpha 3, Oscar Sierra Oscar, please show his channel some support. I'll also leave you with a link to the blog post that goes along with this video. If I would have posted everything, the video would simply have been too long. Finally, let me know what you think about this video and its content in the comments. So here we go guys. If you like what I'm doing and you want to support the channel, please give me a thumbs up and share this video with someone who might enjoy it. Rock and roll. Thanks for watching. 73 and ciao.